Okay, guys, so Rick and I are with you. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Hey, how's everyone doing today? So a quick tech update for you. Firstly, what's this gun holster thing I'm wearing? It's to make my posture better, just so that you uh, can stop thinking about that. So uh, I have been doing a huge amount of work while Rick has been gallivanting in Scotland, haven't I, Rick? Uh, w yes, you have indeed. It's incredible. <laughs> And Rick is about to do a huge amount of work. Now he's back. So let me just show you the work in the source control. So basically, we left you here on uh, video 50 um, with critical hit and weapon bonus. And this is looking at source tree and all of the things that have been done. Now, I'm not going to go through them in detail. Just suffice to say that if you watch me scroll, I'm just showing off at this point up the screen, there is a lot a lot, a lot of stuff. So why are we doing all that stuff? Well, the idea is that up to this point in the course, we have been showing you what it's like to solve the problem as you go, right, Rick? With kind of going from A to B, but not having a map of the terrain. With people looking right over our shoulders. Yeah, exactly. So what we've done is we've taken you from point A like this, you may have noticed, to point B, which is very realistic, and that gives you the skills you need to understand what it feels like to make a project. We're gonna switch modes now, and we're gonna switch into ready for part two of the course where we need to pick up pace. We're gonna take you from A to B a slightly different way now, and it's gonna be pretty much direct, little tiny planned retracements. So the difference is in the top, we have no map, and in the bottom, we have a map, and then we're going from A to B with a map. All right, so and when, that's you, the when you say map, idea. you mean us prototyping and figuring out what the right answer is and then showing the right answer rather than showing all the different options. Exactly, exactly. But we'll also tell you why we're showing the right answer, right? We so, will. What's it look like? Here we go. So what we have, ignore the, the slightly ugly red health bars Rick is going to customize. But look, note a few things. Ooh, note ow, that the enemies face ow, you when they attack ow, now. Note ooh, that we have ow, special ow, abilities ow, with particle ow, effects ow, like this. Ow, note that we can self-heal and ow, carry that particle effect round ow, with us. So we ooh, can have special abilities that are world ow, space or attached to the character. Ooh, we can pick up weapons ow, like the sword or the ooh, hoe accordingly. Ooh, and... Another thing that's pretty cool is that characters have patrol paths. That white thing you saw there in the scene, uh, this is a patrol Ow. path. So if I disengage Ow. from one of these characters, Ow. which actually I think I mm. can't do because this dude mm. is too fast, mm. um, I would have to Ow. speed up the player a little bit. So mm. let me just cheat by moving him out the way. Let's take this super fast dude, move him over here and hit play. If we just go to the scene view, look what's happening. This guy will just patrol around Ow. from waypoint to waypoint mm. as specified with Ow. a random delay. So that Ow. would allow you to create what Ow. sort of behavior, Rick? Ugh. Well, this is excellent Ow. and very exciting for anyone who's interested in tactical RPGs or to create uh, enemy moments or puzzles where you need to avoid the guard or avoid detection. This is the fundamentals, enemy pathfinding way path, uh, waypoints. Awesome. We've also got, on all of our special abilities, we've now got uh, some new uh, shinies for you. So if we look at a given special ability, they all have now particles that they can fire off and even random array of sounds that they can fire off. So you saw the effect of that, but it's pretty cool. The biggest thing, really, that I've done, the big and hard thing that I've done is to refactor the characters completely. So you'll see that in the videos, but basically I've got rid of all of the default Unity classes. I've I will be increasing our ownership over the code, and we're making it so that basically players and enemies are roughly the same thing. It's just that a player is controlled by, well, the player, and an enemy is controlled by an enemy AI script that we have written. I think it's good to note as well that why didn't we just start with that at the very, very start? Fundamentally, when you make a game, you don't know what your game is going to end up like. If you try to design it perfectly at the start, it gets very tight and rigid and you don't get to the point where you discover what's awesome about your game. So we had to discover what's awesome about our game. Now we're at the point where we know our game and this is the best way to structure it. Absolutely. So guys, look forward to the change of gears. I'd be interested to get your feedback on how you feel at when we start teaching in a slightly different gear now. We step up a gear ready for, for part two. Part one will be finished probably this month in July. Uh, there will be a big gap before part two because Rick and I have got to focus on the Unity 2017 course for a little bit. But more importantly, for this course, we've got to prototype to the end of part two, which means basically to the end of the game before we start teaching it so that we can take you there faster. You've seen the slow pace, the, the this is how you make decisions pace. We now need to put our foot to the floor. Okay, so all I've got to cover, Rick, anything from you? No, that's great. Very excited. We're nearly at the point where our game is ready to show as a prototype. If you guys are launching a Kickstarter, I think you're nearly at the point where your game's going to be very demo worthy and to push it out there as a Kickstarter or to show people and get them playing it. Pretty exciting stuff. Awesome, guys. See you in the course. I'll be shipping from tomorrow.